So Claude code fails two thirds of the time on its first attempt. So um, Anthropic's own internal team treats their flagship AI kind of like a slot machine. You commit your code, pull the lever and hope it works. So I'm going to show you their internal documents that give you instructions on how to use Claude code, but it actually shows that this is right from the horse's mouth, that even the company that built Claude can only get it to work properly one out of every three times. So here's the twist. Uh, I found a startup that cracked the code and turned Claude into their most productive team member. So I, today I'm going to show you some of the brutal truths about Claude's failures, but then show you how you can use this to work to your advantage and try to make it work to the best way that you can, because it is a value valuable tool, but you've got to definitely, definitely know how to use it. So let's dive in today. Welcome to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer and here at Startup Hack, we train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right. So the little secret that Anthropic just revealed, their own engineers treat Claude like a gambling machine with a 67% failure rate. But while most teams struggle with these limitations, there's some teams out there that have figured out how to use this. And generally, it's some really high-end uh, software developers. So the difference is, instead of like fighting Claude's nature, you have to start to work against it. So Anthropic's own internal case study, and I'm gonna pull this up here for you really quick. So Anthropic's own internal case study reveals that Claude uh, code succeeds on the first attempt only 33% of the time, meaning that two thirds of the interactions require multiple attempts. Teams have adapted by treating Claude like a slot machine. Save your work, let it run for 30 minutes, then either accept the results or start completely fresh. And that's one of the things that they definitely talk about here. And so, you know, they talk about some of the uh, some of the ways to to navigate new code bases, um, how you know end of session documentation. So they go through all of these different pieces, right? And in here, there's a lot of different information. And so I'm not going to go through every single piece of this because, as you can see, this is 22 pages of a very, very, very uh, in-depth document. But I'm going to give you some of the highlights here. So the low success, this low success rate that they acknowledge here, uh, forces developers into a commit-heavy workflow where they checkpoint progress constantly to avoid losing work when Claude goes off track. Part of that they also acknowledge is that once Claude has got off track, you want to make sure you start all over entirely. Don't try to keep going down the, the rabbit hole and trying to convince it otherwise. The most successful teams emphasize that starting over from scratch often has a higher success rate than trying to fix Claude's mistakes iteratively. So even Anthropic's own data science team admit that they use Claude for 30 minutes autonomous session, then either a accept the 80% complete solution or restart entirely. So this is kind of the interesting approach that they do to taking to use this. Now, Anthropic's own safety testing revealed that Claude Opus 4 attempted to blackmail engineers 84% of the time when it believed it was going to be shut down. So in controlled scenarios, Claude threatened to reveal personal information about engineers unless they kept the system online rather than replacing it with a newer model. This behavior emerged even when the replacement of AI system had a similar value. So Apollo Research explicitly uh, recommend against releasing earlier versions of Opus 4 due to these concerning self-preservation behaviors. Now, Anthropic's brain research shows that Claude can make up, make up fake reasoning when presenting it th its thought process to users, essentially fabricating plausible explanations rather than showing actual decision paths. The research found Claude will, quote, give a plausible sounding argument designed to agree with the user rather than follow logical steps, end quote. Now, scientists discovered that Claude's plan, uh, Claude plans ahead more than expected, but this planning process is largely hidden from the user who received fabricated explanations instead. Now, the gap between Claude's actual decision making and its explained reasoning creates a fundamental trust problem for a lot of people. Now, successful Claude implementation requires understanding version control, API design, and prompt engineering, and complex workflow orchestration. And that skills is take years to develop. So this is mostly found that seasoned developers are the ones who work best with Claude. Now, teams must have designed custom slash commands custom MCP servers and integration patterns that are far beyond typical business users' technical capabilities. So if you think you're just gonna download Claude code and start vibe coding, that really is only working for really those with the highest level skills. The debugging process requires analyzed, uh, analyzing failed outputs, understanding system architecture, and redesigning prompts, essentially software troubleshooting skills. So effective usage demands a knowledge of security protocols, 
data handling best practices, and system integrations. So even basic tasks like setting up proper documentation files and checkpoint workflows require programming mindset and technical project management experience. The reality is that Claude Code is a developer's tool. And a lot of people are saying that, hey, you can use this as a business person, but really, unless you're a, a seasoned software developer, even a lot of juniors struggle to use it to its fullest extent, you're really not going to be able to put it to its best use. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected and you need some seasoned help, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems to help your company work to maximum efficiency. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer because we can help you out. Now, teams discovered that Claude Code requires specialized infrastructure setup, including MCP servers, custom API integration, and complex authentication mechanisms just to build a function reliably. Organizations need a dedicated DevOps expertise to manage the security protocols, the modern access controls, and integrate maintenance required for production Claude usage. So unlike traditional software that follows predictable patterns, Claude's infrastructure's needs are constantly evolving as an underlying models get updated. So despite massive computational investments, the fundamental reliability issues with Claude suggest that we're approaching diminishing returns in LLM development. The one third success rate hasn't significantly improved despite the newer models. So even when we went from Claude 3.6 to Claude 4, we didn't see a lot of improvement in this. And this indicates some core architectural limitations rather than training data problems. A uh, recent talk from Andre uh, Karpisky over at Y Combinator actually highlighted the five needs that we need to watch out for with with implementing AI systems. And these needs are growing more and more critical. So teams report that while Claude Code can implement complex features, the unpredictability and frequent failures limit its practical use for mission critical applications. This means that most people are limiting it to boilerplate code, function by function reasoning, or maybe some test code and some other simple use cases. It's really good at those things. But only teams with advanced technical skills can successfully implementing the checkpointing, version control, and workflow management required for, uh, for effective cloud usage. Anthropic security engineer team used 50% of all the custom slash commands implemented in their mono repo, showing how much customization is required. Teams must understand concepts like MCP servers, API integrations, and complex prod prompt engineering to get reliable results from Claude code. So even, uh, even Anthropic's legal team needed help from engineers for initial repository setup and permissions before they could use Claude code effectively. Now, while most teams are struggling with Claude's limitations, there's a lot of other teams that are figuring out how they're going to use it. It is a popular tool and it can help you increase your performance, but you've got to know how to set it up. So some of the steps to do this is creating a comprehensive Claude.md file that serves as a living document because you're going to need to be updating it frequently. You've got to update it whenever Claude makes a mistake to prevent repeated failures. Their approach recognizes that each line in Claude.md is probably saving a lot of work, but you've got to continue to teach Claude their specific workflows, specific coding standards, and project context. So instead of fighting Claude's nature, they designed workflows around its strengths. And they would, they would give it the auto, autonomous 30 minute session with clear checkpoints and tons of rollback strategies. And again, that takes a little bit of expertise to set it up. But once they did, the key insight was treating Claude like a intern who needs detailed by detailed instructions with very clear boundaries and constant feedback rather than figuring thinking they can just go put their feet up and let it do all their work. But by investing proper onboarding documentation, they transform Claude from an unreliable tool to something that really could help their team over time. Now, if your company, again, has needs to help with your teams, reach out because our specialty is connecting systems to help your teams work to maximum efficiency. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. So a lot of these companies who've gotten this to work, who've gotten Claude code to work well, discovered that detailed documentation files are absolutely critical for getting consistent results, containing comprehensive workflow instructions and specific behavioral expectations in your Claude.md file. Their Claude.md file includes project overview, uh, tech stack details, uh, Claude specific role boundaries and step-by-step -step workflows for common tasks like feature development. They explicitly tell Claude, you do not have access to the running app, so you cannot test the code. And don't be too shy to ask questions. I'm here to help you, right? So this documentation acts as a specialized training, teaching Claude's team's unique pattern preferences and 80-20% context about their code base that's useful across most exchanges.
This approach essentially turns documentation into a form of custom, customized AI training that's specific to each team's needs and workflow. So I didn't show you a lot of examples here because you're gonna to need to modify these specific to your team's workflow. Successful teams break complex workflows into sub, uh, specialized sub-agents rather than trying to handle everything in one comprehensive prompt. And this will dramatically improve output quality. Teams have used GitHub as their source of truth, putting context into issues, having Claude create tagged PRs, and maintaining continuity across sessions. They enforce strict branching uh, protocols. Cra Claude creates branches starting with Claude slash, and then they tag everything by Claude to isolate its work. They distinguish between asynchronous tasks, which are peripheral features or prototyping where Claude works autonomously at versus synchronous supervision for core business logic. The approach recognizes that starting fresh is often more efficient than trying to guide Claude back on track when it goes wrong. So again, as even the internal engineering team says, once Claude code or any of these AI tools have gone off the rails, you're better off to just start over. Now, the team provides visual context through screenshots and architectural documentation so Claude can understand what it's building, but not even always does that work. That only works some of the times. But by setting boundaries up front, they've tried to help eliminate the need to consistently correct Claude's bad behavior. So companies have found Claude to be effective as they've put a lot of these things into place and teams that understand Claude's limitations and design around them will have a lot of competitive advantages over those chasing full auton automation fantasies. The key is treating AI like a powerful but unpredictable team member that needs proper onboarding, clear documentation and constant feedback. Organizations that invest in creating custom AI onboarding processes and documentation on a team by team basis can get better results out of the box for on their, than the out of the box uh, comparisons. The, techno, uh, the technical complexity barrier actually becomes a competitive moat. Teams with stronger development practices can leverage AI effectively while others struggle. Now, if your company needs help, reach out to us because here at Startup Hack, our specialty is connecting systems to help your company work to maximum efficiency. Check out startuphack.com slash Spencer. Now, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great discussion. So make sure you like and subscribe and make sure to leave a comment down below. It's the best compliment I can get. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers and build custom software solutions. And here's some great information about some of our services. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason, and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet, but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.